Whenever you take your gloves off, they always end up like this. Here's a cool little trick without having to blow into it. Sometimes it's really easy to put things on backwards and not realize until you actually get it fitted up to the actual bike <laughs> and then you realize it was backwards. Oh well, you figure it out when you get there. gotten back from a ride on the CX500. Uh, I went up for a fairly decent ride up the mountains and found that the suspension is just a little bit too soft for what I like. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've just gone and picked myself up a set of these fork seals. So what I'm going to do is take the forks off, show you the entire process of actually taking the forks off, uh, putting the new or taking the old fork seals out, putting the new fork seals in after cleaning them all up and then putting them back in the bike and just show you the entire process of how I do this. Um, and obviously put oil in them and what I went with is a 15W oil. I went that way purely because it was recommended to go either 10 or 15 and I decided to go 15 fork fluid not automatic transmission fluid because that's what's recommended in the actual workshop manual. So I went that way now if you want your forks to be a little bit harder a little tip or trick that you can do is just top them up a little bit more than what the actual workshop manual tells you to do by putting a little bit more oil in will make them just that little bit more firm. Start with a recommended CC volume and then just up it from there. You can always take that cap off and just add a little bit later. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get stuck into it. So all that's required to take these out is one pinch bolt here. There's another pinch bolt just here on the bottom triple clamp. Obviously you may have to take your uh, light bracket off if you have something like that. You may have a different light set up. Uh, this whole front end's changing and that's why mine's pretty much just temporary at the moment. Uh, and also you need to take your fender off and your caliper. Now depending on the model you have, you may have two calipers. This model only has the one. Uh, it's a 78 model, so just the one caliper on the one side just because it's obviously attached so you want that unattached this won't come out with the caliper in the way um, it should slide down once I take that caliper off which I'll do now pretty much all that came out so I think I found the solution to my problem so if you don't own one of these and you end up buying one you'll wonder what you did without it uh, these things are so handy if you own a bench vise you'll know how handy that is and the only downside to a bench vise is it does take up really good real estate on your bench uh, when you're trying to do other things so this is cool um, you don't need a bench for it you just pretty much set it up on the ground anywhere you want and you can clamp whatever you want to it, paint on it, you can set a table on it. I've done a video actually, a really short little bit of a video with this thing, but yeah, awesome, awesome thing to have. If you do want to grab one, um, you want to know exactly what it is, I'll leave a link in the description for this thing. Because this is such a slippery surface, nothing's going to hold it better than the actual fork clamp itself. So just throw it back in your lower fork clamp. 
do it up nice and tight, put the steering on full lock, and then you're good to go. Time to take it for a ride and see how it feels. is a major improvement to what it was like before. So what I've basically done is replace the fluid and that's really it, uh, apart from cleaning everything up because uh, there was hardly any fluid in there. But yeah, major, major difference. Um, makes me wonder what it's going to actually be like uh, when I do reshocks on this because they're a little bit bouncy too. They probably need replacing. Also what I did was I put this 15 millimeters, um, you know, lowered at 15 millimeters, I guess, uh, to bring the front end down just a tad. Uh, and also I've just pretty much reversed exactly what I did when I took everything off. So obviously your pinch clamp, pinch bolt here, pinch bolt up here, um, caliper, fender, so your four bolts for that. So it's pretty simple stuff, uh, easy to do, and I really, really highly advise getting one of these guys if you do decide to do it because it just makes life so much easier holding that fork. Uh, you can use a bench vise, whatever you have. Um, there's ways around it without actually buying something like this, but it does make life a lot easier for a lot of tasks that I do in the workshop. So anyway, that's it. So my channel is starting to grow quite fast. And one of the things that I do really want to do is give back to the guys that are putting in the hard work. Uh, the guys that started out just like I did. And one of the guys that I want to give a shout out to, his name is Tom. So Tom reached out to me and he said, I want to contribute to your build. Uh, the CB750 Spaghetti Monster. Um, and he said, look, I make CNC parts. Uh, is there anything you need? Just let me know. And I said, what I'd love to do is get a little round disc made uh, to fit over this, um, down the bottom here, I've got a solenoid box that I made and I would love like a little feature thing sort of sitting on that. And he made these things, but he didn't just make one. He ended up, he ended up making six of them and he anodized them in all different colors to suiting to wherever I want to put them. Um, I'll show you a close up. So I've taken two of them off. One is actually on the 750 and the other one's on the black CX500 that I'm riding around. And he made these things 
obviously on a CNC machine and he just laser cut or engraved this my logo in there and it's absolutely amazing like it's so cool that he has done that for me but since then Tom's now gone on to actually start his own channel um, he's designed his own logo he has he's building his own cafe racer and he's got some pretty cool editing skills by the look of things he's just starting out so his channel is called another cafe racer build um, and it's just like I said he's released his first video I'll put a link in the description so if you're into cafe races and you want to see another build process from the very beginning of him actually making a seat and doing whatever he's got to do then definitely subscribe to him he's an absolutely awesome guy and he does make CNC parts so if you do need anything uh, reach out to him I mean I'm sure he'll help you design something and make it for you uh, he is in Canada I'm trying to work out where to put these guys the original place I was planning to put this on this bike uh, didn't work as well as I wanted I don't know why it just doesn't look exactly like I had in my head um, however I'll show you where I've put it I've just sort of tacked it on there at the moment just sitting there uh, and I'll show you a few other places where I was thinking about putting it and I would love your feedback if you think of somewhere on this bike that this thing would look good this logo would look really cool um, please leave me a comment on the CX 500 it fits perfectly on this little spot here the actual key um, the keyhole is directly under this, but it, the key doesn't really do anything. Uh, this pretty much stays down as it is anyway, so it doesn't need to worry about it flipping up. But it just sat there perfectly, so I've just pretty much mounted it there. And it looks kind of cool, because when I do the vlogging, you can see, I guess, that much of the tank. And it sort of sits there uh, when the sun hits it. It's kind of really bright. It looks cool. And it's my logo in every single video that I've logged, so I'm happy with that. Tom did an awesome job of them. But with the CB750, you can see that I've mounted it on top of that solenoid box that I built to hide the solenoid. Uh, it was my original place for it. That's my original plan. It doesn't look exactly how I wanted it to look. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put leave it there or if I'm going to find a new home for it. I have, like I said, a few to play with. But alternatively, so I was thinking about doing something like that right in the center on top of that nut, obviously, right there. But then I was like, you know what would look really cool is if I was to put it off center, something like that. And I mean, I don't know if I'd go to the extent of actually getting this milled down so it sits fairly flush. Um, however, that would look really cool. And it all depends on what gauges I run with, if that's going to look any good and if it, you know, anything overhangs it. I could also put it somewhere like that. That would look kind of really cool. There's just a few different ideas. I don't know if you've seen the bike and you think of a perfect spot to put it, please let me know because, yeah, I think I'm only going to use one. I'm not going to use any more than one. It's just a subtle little a branding on the bike cafe racer garage. I think it's cool. I'm just not sure exactly where to put it. So, yeah, I'd love your feedback. And because Tom was so generous to actually make six of them, I'm probably going to end up having one on this guy as well. So... And then I'll have spares for the next bikes that I do. I'll probably put one in every single bike that I have. I think they're just absolutely awesome. Um, it's just a cool little touch of the branding to the bike.